last speaker uh, needs to be studied by young people here and others who have had a lifetime of diplomacy. The young ones, imagine yourself being a new member of your foreign service. How are you going to go about your career? What's it going to take? This individual is now in his 41st year of practicing uh, diplomacy. And how did he begin? He started as a member of his country's foreign service. And then from there, he became a desk officer dealing with uh, political affairs. Then he became a member of the foreign minister's uh, cabinet and a deputy member after that of the foreign minister's uh, cabinet there. Then he became a director of the ministers of cabinet there. And this was in the period from 1988 to uh, 2009. And then on the basis of his performance in all of these uh, ways of getting a diverse and linear experience, he was appointed uh, Oman's ambassador to Russia, non-resident ambassador to Belarus, or to U Ukraine, and to Armenia, and to Moldova. And then from that experience, he becomes head of the Office of Political Affairs, brought him back to, to Muscat there, still building on these experiences in edu empirical uh, education. Uh, and after being the head of the Office of Political Analysis, he becomes the head of the entire department for the foreign ministry. Then he becomes the chief of staff for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Then he becomes the acting undersecretary for diplomatic affairs in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And then he becomes what he has been since 2019 uh, to the present uh, ambassador of the Sultanate of Oman to the permanent admission of the Sultanate of Oman to the United Nations. Uh, this is a textbook case uh, of uh, a typical regular, normal career diplomat's progression uh, from being interested in diplomacy and to getting to one of the highest positions that any diplomat in any country could aspire to. His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Al Hassan uh, first came to meet uh, when I brought a delegation to Oman and we were uh, provided a briefing uh, by His Excellency uh, at the time. And at the end, I remember members of the delegation saying, you're kidding me, he could not be an, a member of the government. We have never heard a person speak more straightforward and with no holes barred about facts, realities, trends, indications, challenges, and deliberations, implications, ramifications, and ramifications uh, of the relationship between his country and the United States and the position and role of his country in regional and world affairs. Uh, here we have Mr. Textbook Case himself, Dr. Mohammed Al Hassan, Oman's ambassador to the United Nations. <clears throat> start by saying salam alaikum. Peace be upon you. I don't deserve that introduction, frankly. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Jean. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be invited and to speak before the 28th annual Arab-US Policymakers Conference here in DC. This is the first participation for me in my new capacity as the permanent representative of the Sultanate of Oman to the United Nations in New York. And I'm very delighted to be here. We in the Sultanate of Oman value and appreciate the invaluable role 
being played by the National Council on US-Arab Relations in fostering better relations and better understanding between the United States and the Arab world. I would like to assure you, John, of Oman's continued support to the programs and the role played by the National Council on US-Arab Relations at all levels. We welcome including Oman in your programs. We have enjoyed the visits of many students from this country to the Sultanate of Oman, and we would like to see more coming to our region. Having said this, coming from Oman, I wonder what I'm going to be saying, because one of the few countries in the Middle East that has no problem with anybody is Oman. We are a country that is in peace with itself. <laughs> We're a country that is in peace with itself, in peace with its neighbors, in peace with the rest of the world. So, allow me just to mention a few things. And I'll be speaking about the geopolitical situation in the Middle East, and more particularly, in the Arabian Peninsula and the Gulf. I will also talk a little bit about the foreign policy of Oman, and I will conclude with some remarks about the US-Arab relations and future directions. Before doing so, it is very important to clarify a few things, and I would like to challenge your intelligence and refer to some of the myths about the Middle East and the Arab world, and I will mention a few. One of the first myths, the Middle East is a liability on the US. That is not true. Number two, the Middle East is static. That is also not true. Number three, Zaydis and Houthis, they are not Shiite. Number four, war in Yemen can only be settled through military means, and that's not true. Number five, Yemen is a burden on the GCC. That's absolutely not true. Number six, Iran is seeking to close the Strait of Hormuz. That's also not true. And number seven, crippling the economy of Iran will make Iran change behavior? That's not true. All what I have mentioned are myths about the Middle East and about my region. Reality in the Middle East is that the Middle East is so dynamic, in fact, sometimes more dynamic than expected. <laughs> And for, the, for those of you who were fortunate to visit the Middle East and visit some capitals, you could have seen the changes that have occurred in the last 30 or 20 years in Muscat, in Dubai, in Manama, in Kuwait, in Riyadh. The Middle East is changing. Middle Eastern youth, too, who are the future of the Arab world, are also different today than generations that have preceded. They are more connected, better educated, more learned, and most importantly, with different orientations and expectations than those that have preceded them. Let me just say a few things about the relationship between the United States and the Arab countries. And I would like to say, it is very healthy relationship, and it is beneficial to both sides. It is not a one-way track. The Middle East is never a li liability on the United States. For your information, the US benefits, too, from this relationship. And we in the Middle East regard the role of the United States very positively. There are mutual benefits and interest for I would like to name a few things that have come from this current administration, and that is the Middle East Strategic Partnership. 
it holds tremendous expectations for the betterment of the Middle East. And we in Oman, we support it wholeheartedly, and we believe it has something better for the region. The Middle East today, as some of my colleagues have mentioned, is going through economic and social transformation. All the GCC countries have embarked on economic diversification programs to lessen the dependency on oil and gas. Don't misunderstand me. Oil and gas continues and probably will continue to be the driving force behind much of the development in the Middle East. However, other sectors such as service, logistics, and, to and tourism are gaining ground. Speaking about my own country, Oman, I cannot add to what you have mentioned about Oman in your interventions here. And I would like just to inform you that we also have impact on a transformation and diversification of our economy. And we are on the right track. It's just a matter of time before we see the benefit of this diversification. It takes time. Referring also to Oman, in a nutshell, I could say that the story of Oman is a story of peace, tranquility, and peaceful diplomacy. We do not engage in anything that will add negativity and lack of security and stability in the region. This is something that we have pursued, and this is something what we're going to continue doing. We in Oman have no dispute whatsoever with any country. In fact, the contrary, we are the bridge of peace, stability with all the countries, including Iran and others. Our aspirations toward peace stems from our strength. We, the Omanis, a country that have existed for thousands of years and will continue to do so, know that the art of diplomacy and good conduct of, in foreign relations rest on expanding your circle of friends. It is, better, it is better to have friends than foes and enemies. It is always better to have peace and settle differences through peaceful means than waging wars and the use of force. We're also of the view that security in the Middle East and the Gulf region requires the, part the participation of all the countries in the region. We are also of the view that security of the Gulf is, link is linked to the security and stability of Yemen. Having a more secured, a better secured, and a more stable Yemen will enhance the region's security and stability. That is why we in Oman are of the view that Yemen needs to enjoy a special relationship with the GCC. It is better to include Yemen than to exclude Yemen. Peaceful and secure Yemen is never a burden on the Gulf. A country of almost 26, 27 million people with potential talents and skill. Yes, Yemen have some serious challenges to face, but who doesn't? Our role should be to help the Yemenis address and confront those challenges facing them. Are the Yemenis capable of doing just that? With the help and assistance from its neighbors and the international community, there is no doubt in my mind that the Yemenis are capable of doing that. The Middle East and the Gulf have seen more than its share of trouble. I believe it is time to have a different take and a different policy on the Middle East. We in Oman are very hopeful that the current US administration is doing its best to engage on the Palestinian-Israeli crisis, which remains the main issue for many generations in the Arab world. We think that peace is possible between the Israelis and the Palestinians. But solutions have to take into account the legitimate 
aspiration of all. I have learned from living and going to school in this country that when you negotiate, you need to leave some tip on the table for the other side. It's not a maximum or zero-sum game. Having a Palestinian state, I believe, is a strategic necessity not only for the Palestinians, but also for the Israelis, the Middle East, and the international community. Allow me to conclude by saying there is a life after high school. And I believe all what we have seen in the Middle East in terms of the turmoil and the challenges that we are witnessing, hopefully it will be the rebirth of a new Middle East, the re rebirth of a new Arab region. And I believe those of you like the National Council on US-Arab Relations and others who are the silent fighters towards peace will be, their role will be, effect, will be so effective in trying to build a new Middle East in the future. Thank you very much. Sorry.